What's up y'all, it's Brian Keith and I'm back with another video and today we're going to be talking about the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I missed this episode because I was over here in um, out of town with family and friends having a good time. It was a great, great, great good time. I got to experience like the five star experience went to a great restaurant, um, Michelin star, had great food and yeah, I had such a great weekend. So the last thing I was thinking about is do, coming on camera, doing a review of what's going to happen. But I'm here. Like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get into the video. Yeah. Let me check my check my shit real quick. Hotter than the fire, come out. I'm a flame. And if you wanna play with me, you can't play in me. On the playground, bitch, you can't play with me. Got it. One is securing the bag. All right, so this video is gonna be bouncing all all over the top. There's no particular order, but let's just start it off with the whole beef with Kenya and Marlo. Like that. No one in this group would take me away from Michael oh, and William. Okay. Oh, God. No. Yeah, because you gave him. She away. cannot say anything. Kenya. Well, so, like the the whole situation situation is just dumb i feel like kenya was trying to be the bigger person but to be honest just looking at it fair kenya you walked into the building you really didn't speak you didn't uh, general hello and you really didn't speak to marlo she was a host so i guess it could have been a situation where you could have been like okay let me just say hi just to be cordial but you paid her dust and i think marlo only wanted you to just be like hey what's up how are you doing, girl? Blah, blah, blah. Marla asked the question, like in the last video, she asked the question, are you going to stay? You said no, which is perfectly fine. I feel like with Marlo, it's just like, if she says she don't know, stop harping on the, the situation. She does she doesn't know she want to stay because y'all not cool. So I get it with Kenya. She's not about to be fake with someone. And I do feel like she was, Kenya was basically like gassing him when she was like, oh, you know, trying to lose the fact that Marlo's trying to be aggressive. And that's not even the case. I do feel like, um, like when they were all in the house and trying to get into the car, Marla was like, Good. "Do not let this little uh, immature five-year-old in the white um, jacket in, please, sir. She's not with us." It's not that deep, and I wish, cause this whole thing led to her telling the girls to go home. I just call for cars. I just want everyone to leave. Thanks, but no thanks for um, making me feel better. It's it's not really that deep. Like, so you're putting all the other girls in the middle kicked everybody out the house bought cars for everybody sent them home because of kenya because this is not the type of girl trip that you want to be on because this is supposed to be about you so if it was supposed to be about you then you should have just went by yourself and called it and just bought the cameras because it is what it is in a whole situation with the low blow now did kenya throw a low blow kenya threw a low 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 blow but i'm not mad off the strength of marlo been throwing low blows at kenya so i'm just like unfortunately I'm very much an eye for an eye type of bitch, so I'm just like, I mean, fair is fair. Like, you threw a low blow at her plenty of times, so if she gonna throw your, your, your nephews in your face, I mean, do I think it's right? No, but I don't think Kenya really cared at that point. <laughs> and then we saw her little line, and she was like, girl, I'm jealous of what? She was like, I'm an icon, you're an ex-con. I'm like, okay, girl. So we're gonna go with Drew and Fatoum. So Fatoum show up and Fatoum is just like, hey, they tell me, I didn't know you gonna come. Whoop the whoop the ah, 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 all this right. So right out the gate, Fatoum just gets right into it. And I don't know really what sparked it off. I think they were trying to get into the car. No. You hey, thought Sheree doesn't have a lot of dogs. Go pee in a bush. <laughs> She's barking. <laughs> and um, Fatoum and Drew just, I think they skipped the part. We don't know what clashed it, but they just started getting into it. And Fatoum, I, I feel like Fatoum is doing just enough to get under Drew's skin. And I know Drew is not really feeling Fatoum off the strength that she does talk about her husband. And then bringing with Sheree is just. She's your lap dog. She's not my lap dog. I don't have a lap dog. She, she, she's your lap dog. Oh, and I don't no, want to ride I didn't, it. I did not have a lap dog. Look later on the episode when Drew threw the bone. I got something for you. This is here. Get it, bad. <laughs> this bitch throw Ross dildo at the tomb. So it, they were, the security was holding Drew back, Fatoon back. Fatoon looked like a wild woman, and Drew over here started barking. <laughs> and Kenny was like, "I get y'all, I get y'all real, but all that, all that." So Drew, you know, Drew's gonna basically do do a lot. Oh, um, Manetta, Manetta, Manetta definitely gives me more of like a Cynthia Baylor, neutral, not really in the mix. Um, I feel like she'll get in the mix if someone brings her in the mix, but she seemed very much a neutral party and just there to have fun. Um, Sonya and Kenya, um, they basically have a talk. 
Was that the world's smallest violin? It is. Lord. Because you can't give a child back. That's for life. And Sonya feels like Kenya, like how, like she's basically trying to tell, trying to show Kenya the side of Marlo. And Kenya's like, at the end of the day, Marlo has done X, Y, and Z. So why am I even going to waste my time trying to, like try to be cool with her? I'd rather just avoid her and keep it, keep it pushing. And with Sonya, I feel like Sonya's trying to play both sides. And I feel like at some point she's gonna have to, I hate saying picking a side, but she's gonna have to pick a side at this point because she's doing, Sonya's doing definitely what Candy used to do. Where it's like, you let Kenya say slick stuff and let it slide and not say nothing. You wouldn't just talk to her for two seconds, even if y'all far apart, so we can all go? After all that, you think I'm gonna talk to her? Girl, get out of my face. And when they go out to the car where everybody's trying to leave and Sonya was like, can you just talk to, talk to Marlon so we can just go ahead and go? And Kenya was like, if you if you can see Drew and Saray's situation, then you should be able to see my situation with Marlo. You don't care how she's acting right now? If you had a problem with the way Drew was yes. with Sheree, yes. you have to have a problem with what she just did. And Sonya's basically like, well, I mean, you're being pat well, she didn't even say this to her face i wish she would have but she was like you're being dismissive to me about this situation so now how do you think marlo feels so she says she totally uh, understands where marlo's coming from kenya really doesn't give a fuck she's over here just over here bouncing on trapper lee living her best life um and like i said i feel like marlo trying to make this whole episode about her she tried to make this like oh my god um try to be so dramatic and i felt like with marlo that irritated me i'm just like it's not that deep just go ahead and go on with the show and we can keep it pushing but she didn't want to do that do y'all hear about sheree and um martel child when i tell you her picker is all the way wrong girl do better do better so you want to like with sheree i'm just like sheree and her business sheree literally has the most the most known business out of everyone right we all knew about Sh on she by sheree from season two season three so it's like we all knew about she by sheree but there has not yet been any products any fashion any nothing and like what candy said candy made the most sense it to me one day you're doing million dollar business yeah. on a bootleg budget i think you have the biggest brand out of this group that's not a brand absolutely i said i joke about it all the time it's like literally all sheree has to do is take take make a small line maybe like four or five pieces, a little bit of accessories, make the money off that, hire more people and make it into an actual brand and then you'll be a household name, an actual household name because she really, I mean, everybody knows about she about your right. Child, I'm over here editing and literally that was just the same thing that Candy just said, trying to make it seem like I just made up something so profound. Child. <laughs> but I really don't feel like Sheree's product is going to be because I saw on Watch What Happens Live when they were like, do you think Sheree's product is going to be um, in stores by 2020? No, it's not. I don't feel like she's going to actually get get it there. And I feel like she's just going to be wasting our time because she just want a storyline. Sheree do not want to make no money. Sheree don't want no business. She just want to be over here on the show, get this Real Housewife check and call it a day. That's it. Sorry. So at the end of the day, they go inside and all of a sudden, um, Drew throws a freaking bone at um for two it's five, to be honest all this stuff happened they was in the driveway for an hour they were supposed to be in the lift and they were in the driveway for an hour i would have been pissed because now i'm wasting my time my time is valuable and i'm wasting my time so i probably would have went home my damn self because it's just like we're not doing nothing we're just sitting here arguing no and so i guess fatoon was over here in the, um the living room and like i said um drew was just like you know what let me just get this out back and threw the bone and yeah i would just like this whole dog bone thing, it was just like, it was too much. But I definitely think that Drew won the episode. This was Drew's episode. I feel like, like a lot of people in the beginning, especially for me, I really wasn't getting to Drew's marital situation because we all know the negatives about Drew's marital situation. Like it's weird. Her husband seemed very much like narcissistic passive aggressive rude a lot of it but um i just hope that drew just grows into the her individuality instead of outside she has some certain things that i do not like the, the whole comment about well you need to have a baby for your husband like i did not like that because if sonya wants to cr um, continue on her career she can do that as a grown-ass woman like she she Outside of being a mother and being all these other things, an Olympic athlete, she's also a person as well that has her own dreams and goals. So you can all, I, I mean, you can't always get pregnant, but I mean, 
opportunities don't come every like so often so i'm just like you sometimes you gotta just take the opportunity and run with it <laughs> but um i mean drew has been transforming and i like i said in my reviews i've been enjoying drew in the beginning she was irritating but i've been enjoying you drew her sophomore year i think think this is a great sophomore year for her so you know I ain't mad at it but yeah that was real housewives of atlanta i it, it, you know it was all right um I'm just trying to see where we're going with this. Cause right now it just seems plateau. So where are we going with this? But anyway, y'all, like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you all for subscribing. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.